Hi there, this is Dr. Anna Maria Helt, herbalist and microbiologist, and in the background, Milo, my sidekick, here with Basmati.com. And this week I'm talking about a really great plant that I remember from my childhood, uh, honeysuckle. So Lonicera is the genus, and there are several species that are used medicinally. Uh, Lonicera japonica is one of them. Now, uh, you may be familiar with honeysuckle. It's actually a really common garden plant. And so, though, there, here goes Milo getting up and making noise <laughs> every time I do a video. Anyway, this uh, it's a really beautiful viney, climby, common garden plant with usually a creamy white flower um, and often also kind of like a creamy orange flower usually on the same vine and it smells really good uh, when I used to walk to elementary school as a kid it was growing everywhere and we would stop and drink the nectar from the flowers you get a tiny tiny little drip of intensely sweet nectar and the the plant smells absolutely wonderful. Now along the lines of the scent of the plant, if you see essential oil that's called honeysuckle, it's fake. Uh, it's synthetic. There isn't a honeysuckle essential oil. You know, there are some plants that even though they have a strong scent, it's, you know, we, they just can't really isolate the essential oil from the plant, either because the oil is really delicate, you know, often it might be destroyed using the common processes to make essential oils. So a honeysuckle essential oil is going to be a fake one. So maybe just make an infused oil of the flowers. And if you want to know how to do that, go on the basmati.com, do a search for my last name, H-E-L-T as in Tom, and infused oils, and you can learn how to do that. And that might be one way you can capture the scent, aside from just sitting by the plant and appreciating it. And so honeysuckle is for a lot more than just smelling it and tasting the nectar. In fact, in Chinese medicine, it's a very important uh, medicinal herb. Whereas here in the West, people don't even often think about honeysuckle as medicine. It's just thought of as a nice, pretty ornamental garden plant. And I actually do have some growing out on my balcony uh, and not blooming right now. There are just a couple of leaves on it, so nothing to really show you at this point. Uh, but it's a really useful medicine. So in Chinese medicine, it is used for clearing heat. So it's a cooling herb. Um, <clears throat> so it will be used for things like fever and you know flus and colds that have heat associated with them skin inflammations which are considered hot so rashes and things like that autoimmune issues like rheumatoid arthritis uh, and it's also combined with other herbs and used even for high blood pressure now when i learned uh, about this herb as a western herbalist we learned about it as a cooling herb as well um, and we learned about using it for hot flashes so sometimes i will use some honeysuckle in a blend to support a woman who's going through perimenopause or has hit menopause and is still dealing with some hot flashes. And so it's got a cooling aspect to it. And uh, here in the West, for those herbalists that do use it, who are Western herbalists, we also use it for cold and flu. And so it does have antimicrobial properties, and not just with respect to viruses, but also in terms of bacteria. And so one of my teachers, talked about using it for things like MRSA, which is methicillin resistant staph aureus. Now here's the thing with MRSA and staph infections. It's actually really dangerous. You don't want to mess around with it. Um, if you're treating what looks to be an infection and it's not showing signs of getting better within a day or two, uh, or it's getting worse, uh, go to the doctor. Uh, MRSA can be extremely dangerous and uh, you know, hard to treat because it's resistant. But that said, a lot of these bacterial infections do respond well to herbs, but you have to pay attention and you can't wait for it to get worse. And so one of the things it appears to do is help reverse bacterial resistance to treatment. And so this means it's really great in combination with other antimicrobial herbs and hopefully making them more effective against an infection. And so it's used topically, it's used internally as well for this. Now, um, <clears throat> gosh, excuse me, another, uh, going back to the respiratory system, another thing it's used for, let me just see if I can get this to lighten up a bit. Seems really dark in here. Uh, another, uh, thing, respiratory issue that this is used for is uh, 
sinus congestion. And so now is the time of year where people are having spring allergies. Oh, fun. And so hay fever is basically allergic rhinitis. It's uh, inflammation of our sinuses, of our upper respiratory passages. And so this can be a supportive herb for that as well, uh, particularly in combination with other herbs, but play around with it by yourself. The whole, uh, I shouldn't say the whole plant, the aerial parts are what is used. So the flowers, the leaves, even the stem, if you happen to have this growing in your garden, uh, you know, start playing around with it. You can use it as a tea, you can use it as a liquid extract, and so just throw it in a jar with some brandy or vodka and make your own extract that way. And if you go again to basmati.com, you'll find articles on how to make tinctures and liquid extracts and such. Now, there is a flower essence available for this and it is used for things, a lot of things, but one of the things it's used for, at least that I was taught, was for nostalgia. And so this kind of yearning for the past, uh, the algae part means pain. And so nostalgia isn't necessarily like sitting there and being happy, like, wow, the past was so great. It's more like a yearning, an ache for the past. Um, we often get have this notion that things were better back then and you know maybe they were maybe they weren't but you can use honeysuckle for folks or yourself if you're kind of stuck in the past and not living your life now yeah um, and then one of the other things I learned about it is it's very energizing for the upper part of the body so for people that are into the chakra system which is actually found in multiple different cultures under different names it is said to to kind of activate the upper chakras and so here's the thing um the first time i tried the flower essence and i i'm going to be honest i never know what to think about flower essences <laughs> Uh, I do use them for people. Um, I tend to not notice anything with them, but I did use a flower essence once for honeysuckle and I noticed this kind of lightness uh, in my chest and actually at the very crown of my head, this tingling. And it was in that class after we all sampled it that the teacher said, oh, this is used for upper chakra opening. And I thought, how cool. Uh, and it opened, you know, my science brain a little bit more towards these energetic ways of healing. And so I thought that was really cool that I actually did feel it at the top of my head before they told me I was supposed to feel it at the top of my head. So anyway, there's a little bit uh, more of the energetic side of things for honeysuckle. It's a really uh, neat herb uh, and an underused herb here in the West. So get to know it. It's easy to grow. It's a lovely addition to your garden. And I probably will write an article on it now that uh, it's on my mind. <laughs> and I think I will leave it there. And so until next time, be well.